Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the AMX crate and what we're going to be doing is in this one is making a dedicated 177 sub 12 valve for the rifle. So the aim of this little project here is to make the rifle a little more efficient and hopefully a little more consistent. With that being said, the current setup of the rifle produces 400 shots from a 200 bar fill and we're roughly sitting around a 12 feet per second spread over a magazine. So certainly not a bad setup, but one I think we can improve on a little. To achieve this, what we're going to be doing is reducing the whole size of the transfer port system that's in the rifle. What this will do is improve the efficiency of the rifle by not allowing the air to expand needlessly before it's pushed the pellet up the end of the barrel. So at the moment, the transfer port in the rifle is around 6.7 millimeters, and that's too big for a 177 sub 12 rifle. A general rule of thumb is that the transfer port size should be roughly the same as the bore size. So we're going to be remaking the valve with that in mind. The other thing that we're going to be doing different to the Air Max part is sealing off the valve stem by use of an O-ring. So in the background you've seen me face the part, then turn the OD. We've got a number of steps on this part so I've put them in and now we're just coming back to the O-ring grooves. So there's two O-ring grooves to put on this, both of which have been copied off the Air Max original part. The only thing that we're doing slightly different is the back o-ring, the thicker of the two, is being moved back about a millimetre. The only reason for this is to reduce the plenum size in the rifle, although this is such a minor change that I probably wouldn't bother doing it again if I made another valve. But once all the external features are done, we can move on to some of the internal features. First thing we're doing is drilling out the end 2 millimetres for the valve rod, and we're doing this about 10 millimetres deep. And the next thing to do is drill out the end to accept an M6 tap. With that done, we can come back with a 4mm end mill and create a small counter bore where the O-ring will sit. We're using a 4mm end mill in this case as we're going to be creating a flat bottom hole which the O-ring can sit against. With that done, we can finally tap the end M6 and then test fit this small brass nut that I made off camera. Now, to be honest with you, I forgot to press the record button on the camera as I was making this. So I didn't show the making of it, but it is a fairly simple piece. Once we've got the brass nut installed, however, we can finish turn the other side of it. We do that by facing the end to length, putting a small chamfer on it, and then coming through with a 2mm drill bit for a nice snug fit on the valve stem. With that done, we can move the part over to the mill and drill the transfer port hole. First thing we do is spot drill the end using just a 4mm carbide spot drill. Come back with a 4.5mm drill bit. Drill the bulk of the material out roughly halfway through the part and then finish the hole off with a 4.6mm drill bit. The final thing to do is to create a nice small chamfer around the outside to remove the sharp edge. Once that's done we can move the part back over to the lathe and start work on the other side. First thing to do is remove the spigot that we used to hold the part in both the lathe and the mill for the previous operations and then start work on the rest of the internal features. First thing to do is to drill out the waste using a series of drill bits and then using a 5mm drill bit drill through to where the back of the valve will be and we're drilling through until we break through into the hole we have drilled in the mill. Once we've done that we can come back with a 6mm end mill and finish out the hole. We're using an end mill in this application to create a nice flat bottom hole and so that the drill bit doesn't get pulled off centre as we drill through the cross drilled hole. With that done we can bore out the plenum area using a nice small boring bar and we need to get this to 14mm ID. Before we finish out the valve seat to depth we take a countersink and create a small chamfer on the inside of the valve edge and this will just reduce the area that the valve has to seal against. On this rifle we are using a flat edge seal so both the valve edge and the valve seat will be flat faces. But with the chamfer put on we can come back with our boring bar and using a nice fine feed we can take the final pass across the valve face. We need to get this a good fine finish as this is the area that the valve will seal against. And the last operation with the boring bar is to create a nice chamfer for the threads. Once that's done we can put in a small thread in boring bar and finish out the threads in the end. These are going to be M15 by 1 and they're going to be roughly 10 millimeters deep. I say roughly as there will be no definitive end to the threads, as I don't want to create any weak points in this part of the valve. And to do this we're using the DRO, so when we get to around 10 millimeters, I feed in with the tool and bring it away from the work. 
Takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad, as we're not threading up to a shoulder or anything like that. We need this thread to be a nice close fit on the valve adjuster, so it doesn't rattle when it's being shot. So we're using it as a test plug, and once we get the fit we want, we can take the part out of the lathe, and it's pretty much finished. Right then, with that all said and done, here we have the final components. Take a look at the two valves. We obviously have the Air Maxis standard part, which is this one here. And we have the one that we made here. The main difference, obviously, is the hole of the transfer port. And also, we have sealed the end off. So in here is a small O-ring that seals around the valve stem, so that when we take a shot, air is not able to leak to atmosphere through this hole here. The standard Air Max doesn't use any sealing device around the valve stem, although it does use a very tight fitting uh, brass sleeve here to reduce the amount of air that's able to escape to atmosphere. As we said at the start of this video, the main aim of making a new valve was to create a more efficient setup for the rifle in sub-12 and 177 caliber. We did test this new valve and I can say that it is more efficient the standard Air Max PAL. Now, the original valve from a 200 bar fill was getting around 400 shots, and that was shooting from 200 bar all the way down to around 60, 70 bar, which is where the regulator is set. From the same 200 bar fill, the new valve was able to achieve sort of around 480, 470 shots. We did work out the amount of air used per shots between the two valves, and we did that by shooting two magazines of the rifle, so 36 shots, and measuring the pressure before and after we done those shots. On average, over two magazines, the standard Air Max valve used around 12 bar of air, and the new valve used around 10. So with the use of Boyle's Law, we are able to calculate the exact amount of air used per shot, and we did that off camera. So for the original valve, we used around about 160 cc's of air per shot in order to achieve 710 feet per second with JSB heavy pallets. With the new valve, we was able to bump that down a little bit, and the new valve was using around 120 cc's of air per shot. That's with the valve spring tension measured and set the same, and with the reg pressure as a constant. And whilst at the moment we haven't seen a dramatic improvement in consistency, the new valve didn't make the rifle any less consistent, although I do have some other plans for the rifle which hopefully will improve the consistency. The other thing that you see here is a transfer port sleeve which fits inside the block of the rifle. The transfer port in the block of the rifle is around 6.7mm in diameter, and as we've reduced the hole in the valve we also need to reduce this. And in our testing we was using the transfer port sleeve in conjunction with the valve to get us our results. The reason that the new valve is more efficient than the old valve is that with the new valve we are able to achieve the same feet per second as the old valve at a lower hammer spring tension. This means that we're hitting the valve softer to achieve the same feet per second as the old valve. Generally speaking the transfer port hole should roughly be around the same size as the bore of the barrel. This ensures that there's no bottleneck between the valve and the barrel, but it also ensures that the air isn't able to expand needlessly, wasting efficiency. There is still some fine tuning that I'm gonna be doing with this setup, as I believe it can be improved further, but I'll show you them as we actually do them. There are a number of other things that we plan to do with the rifle, which include making a plenum plug for the rifle to reduce the size of the plenum, and also upping the reg pressure slightly to put the regulator pressure at a better spot. I believe 60 bar as a reg pressure is a little too low for my taste. I would rather see it at around 80. In my experience, sort of 80 to 100 bar is where regulators like to be. They work very efficient there, but we'll show you exactly what we do as we do it. I will leave a link to an article which discusses transfer port size in great detail, so if you wasn't sure on how exactly this valve works, or you wanted to learn more, you can read it in the link in the description below. With that said guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.